The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate the growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industries up 56, NASDAQ down 4, S&P's up 8. Gold contract up at $6.20, trading at $15.31 an ounce. You get silver up 18 cents, $18.82 an ounce. Light sweet crude down 99 cents at $55.29 a barrel. And uh, oil, quite a deal, man. Uh, Volatility almost everywhere, right? But oil, quite a deal for sure, yeah. Got up to 57-something uh, uh, when those numbers come out yesterday. Bottom yes. line, gave it up, folks. Notes and bonds, bottom line, they rejected lower price. They're going to have lighter volume on the daily. They're going to have lighter volume on the weekly. At the end of uh, today, what you're going to see out here is you're going to get a rejection of lower price with lighter volume. Guess what? 10-year up one tick, 131.11. 30-year up 14, 164.10. They both continue to want higher price, lower yield. King dollar, king dollar down 182 ticks, trading 97.760. Now, King Doll has volume today. We'll see whether we can get follow through next week on the way down. Bottom line is that uh, we're, we've just rolled, we're rolling from the uh, September to the December contract out here today. Both contracts actually have volume on the way down. Euro, euro is at a buck ten. The yen is uh, trading at 106.74, and the pound is at 123 to one US dollar. So I heard your update. So the jobs the, data right yeah and yeah, so we can pull up kind of some of the articles because it is pretty interesting and, and, of course and, and that jobs data so the the we know the census is bringing in jobs yeah right? so headline number right to go over it just for everybody 130,000 is the number that comes in for august the expectation yeah. had been for about 150,000 you have the unemployment rate at 3.7 percent you did get average hourly earnings increasing by 0.4 percent for the month okay that's 3.2 percent over the year i think they were looking that's for good. about three yeah. percent so even being Meeting expectation but here's where really things get a little dicey excluding government hiring right. private payrolls growing by just 96,000 okay. the lowest pace since February yeah. and then digging into it a little bit more as to where they are 34,000 jobs for government right and um, it's gonna be a lot of those census jobs so yes and those are completely a, that, temporary I believe it was it, 20 to 25,000 right. straight out census right, um, right. so you really shouldn't calculate that if you're looking for the health of the economy no, right? no because exactly. that's not a health of the economy it, exactly um, right. that's just uh, once right. every 10 years we right. get to hire some temporary workers, right. and we pay it out of the government till. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you get in, though, this is a retail actually declining, right? That's yeah. where not a, not a good sense, sign as right? well, yeah. um, for sure. They're going to need less people in retail, man. The more, yeah. the, the more that we keep hitting the button, we're not talking to a salesperson. Sure. <laughs> you know. Sure. Um, so, yeah, that's the numbers coming in, and that's kind of what's driving a lot of the action out there, of course, from 830 this morning. So if you take a look at this market, folks, let's go, uh, we'll go to the S&P first. Might as well look at the S&P. So if we look at the, you, you're going to see here, we, you, you're more than at the top of the range because you actually broke the range yesterday when we went up. The, when I say the range, the trading range we had been in, that's yes. 29.44, you're 29.77. Um, we'll see what shakes out here. You know, you, you get over the highs of yesterday, you're underneath them right now. If we go look at the NQs, now the, the NQs have been, the weakest indice for the last couple months. Yesterday, they had a nice jolt. There's no doubt about that, man. Um, the NQs right now, the top of that range, the range, still range I'm talking about, would be 77.89. Yeah. And we got up to, uh, well, today you get up to 78.95. Yes. Um, Pretty similar chart, though, to yeah. the S&P there. Is, yeah. You know, you got all those highs. We just climbed above it yesterday, and we actually then again today peaked above yesterday's high and pulled back. And the real kick is going to be uh, where this shakes out uh, <laughs> as we move through this day. Small caps, small caps are still the weakest indice. The bottom line, they didn't get to their top of the range. Yeah, definitely a different looking you know? chart on that one. Right? And, you know, that's, that's saying quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, notes and bonds, bottom line is that you, what you're going to see here is you're going to see a rejection of lower price. Uh, we had lighter volume yesterday than we were going into. You got 1.1 million contracts. It's going to be the same thing. It's going to be lighter volume because we're coming into 3.4 million or something. Uh, now, what that's going to set up, that's going to set up a 
rejection on a daily and a weekly. Uh, so here, let me just do. Well, it's too early. No, it's not too early to do a weekly. Let me just see what that's going to look like. Yeah, we actually got to a yield of 1.6. Yeah, I heard on that. that yeah. And uh, we're now sitting with the pullback recoil at about 1.55 for the doesn't, yield. Doesn't 1.6 sound loud? It sound huge. It when does. I, we I, were just at 1.44, I think, I, yesterday I, it, morning. It, so when I heard the update, I thought that like 1.6, man, what's happening out here? Yeah. Uh, gold. Uh, th yes, we catching to... quite a bit yeah. off of uh, that 830 number. And, and gold is rejected lower price also. It's going to be, it came right back to, well, not, it didn't make it to the breakout area. The break, the 1503 would be the number. That's when, uh, that was on the 23rd. Okay. It goes from 1503 to 1540. Okay. Um, you get 1510, you're at 1533 rate. Can you go IGPO? Yeah. Just, just to really show that 830 because we were down there about 15, yeah, 1510. Yeah. So, you know, contract showing up $7 on the session, but really we're up 22 bucks from 8.30. Right. Yeah. All right. And then good old King Dollar. So uh, with King Dollar here, we'll see. The uh, slide. What's yeah. going on? A little weakness if, continuing. You know, it, it, we, now this is what's going on. We're rolling, folks, from the, you'll see that the, this, I have the December contract up. I rolled it already. At, there's 95. You're going to see that the U contract still has the, the most, but that'll be it. This will be the last day of it. Uh, let's see, currency. There's 17,000 there, but okay. you can see this contract expires the 19th. So this thing, they got to get out of this contract right okay. now. Um, you know, and we'll see if it can, you know, bottom line, make it back inside the lower range. The lower range is that uh, on the U is the 97,715. I see. DXZ on the December contract. Let's see, it's harder to figure this out, actually. 97,05. Pretty interesting that uh, it looked like we were maybe going to get a hundred handle on the dollar. Oh yeah, just uh, three or four days ago. Yeah, and no... now we're we're right at around 98. Basically, you got the December. You're looking at it 97.7. You got the um, September was I think 98.2 or something like that. Yeah, so. and then let's go over to the uh, euro because this is all you know the, between the euro and the pound, folks. That's what's so the euro's up slightly. You know that came that that yeah. didn't hold price yesterday. You know we got higher, didn't hold price. That's up 14 ticks. Yeah, as uh, the, Great Britain really oh, gives it to their prime minister, oh my and that's, God. the market likes it in terms yeah. of uh, maybe decreasing the chances of a hard Brexit over there. Right. Which is you what know what's seeing. amazing is that thinking that Johnson miscalculated so dramatically, you know what I mean? I guess he thought Jeremy Corbyn would go for the election because he's won an election for four years, so yes. I can understand it. But I heard him like three days ago, and he said, I'm not going to get... Uh, uh, he, he made it like a, a deal about uh, something, you know, someone giving you something, but if you took it, you're going to get slammed. Sure. And, uh, you know, the bottom line, what happens in Britain, folks, is that the opposite party has to go along with the election. And if they thought they were strong enough to, to win, they would go along with it. And in his case, I think Corbyn's case, it was, it was more important to, to push it forward. And he probably, I don't know if he thought he could win or not, but the bottom line, he didn't go along with the election. Yeah, yeah, it seems like they're doing all right over there, Corbin. As in, why go along with it at this stage? Oh yeah. If if Johnson continues to lose vote oh, after vote after vote, he lost his brother. Right. His brother is the prime minister. His brother, one of his, bro his brothers resigned. So his brother had voted against intense. Brexit originally. Okay. To give that some context, yeah. so. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight Dow Dow up forty six Nasdaq down eight S and P's up seven. Come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 52. Nasdaq's down five. S&Ps are up seven. And the guy that started Lululemon, there's no doubt, caught on that we're going to change the way that we dress. That's right, man. And, Look at um, this. They just continue to rock it. So they have their earnings. We'll dig into it. But uh, crushing out of the park, up uh, 13 bucks. Is this an all-time high? It just may be. There Look at go. that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I think I had heard that they beat expectations for 10 straight quarters. Something like that. It would, yeah, make, it would make sense when you look at this chart from 2017. But go, there, you know. There's, there's no doubt. So you get a market cap out here of $26 billion. They took in, we'll go through these numbers. I'm just curious right yeah, here. Yeah, me too. We're all curious. <laughs> so, uh, ooh, look at that. That's some growth, huh? They're almost so $1.5 billion, folks, in 2015. 2020? 3.9. Yeah, 1.8 in 2015, right? To 3. Look at that. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, and they're they're approaching. I mean, fourth quarter of this year, they're looking to take in 1.3 billion. Um, and now that's probably a big quarter, Christmas and whatnot, but still. Okay, so uh, let's see. Comp sales, 17%. Yeah. I wonder what on a constant currency basis implies in that... Um, above the 12 percent estimate regardless and this is the seventh quarter that's been above 10 percent a rare achievement in retail i would say so man because think about that you know comp sales you grow that we all know about compounding right yeah you got to compound something in double digit returns for seven straight quarters i know that's mammoth mammoth numbers like we just saw in their revenue where they are almost doubling their revenue over a couple of years. So look at this, another sign that the $98 yoga pants and $68 men's tank tops. Where you read down here, okay, yeah. yeah. A still in demand. Tank, and this is where it's remarkable too. It's not just that they're growing, they keep beating estimates. Right. You know, like the, and the right. estimates are for huge growth already. Right. And they keep beating the right. huge growth. 10th consecutive profit beat for another sign that, uh, yeah, the demand for those $98 yoga pants and $68 men's tank tops. I don't own any $68 tank tops. Um, yeah. I don't I don't envision I'll be owning a $68 tank top anytime soon, but I'm uh, I'm a fan of the athleisure. 
And, um, you know, the trend is in general. We've talked about it with Kevin Hanks, right? Everywhere. In finance, the trend is the same. People don't wear suits and ties right. everywhere. You know, um, what do we just see? Goldman came off, right? Uh, to You don't have to wear your suit and tie. Right. A lot of companies, business casual, right? Maybe some right. slacks, maybe a button-down shirt, yep. maybe a short sleeve button-down shirt, a collar, something like that. Yep. You can be professional. Yeah, without suit, suits no longer... The tie, equal the tie especially. Real business, the exactly. Tie especially. Right. Um, and the jacket, right? Look at the online sales, folks. Online sales climbed 31%. Yeah, big number. <sighs> On a constant currency basis, those sales represent a bigger piece of the total revenue than they did a year earlier. Yes. Yeah, so That's quite a move, man. Wow. 55% of the stock's up this year through Thursday's close, and that's just going to be added to, because that doesn't include today's, uh, today's spike for sure. Yeah. Pretty intense. We'll take a look at some of the high of oil. No, actually, let's go look at oil. I want to look at the oil because oil, you know, we we were on the air, right? We were coming off the air at 11. Yes. Um, Yesterday you were talking about Yeah. That. They had, uh, you know, the numbers. It was a draw of about 4.9 million yeah. barrels. I think the estimate was looking for a draw of like 2.3 maybe, so a lot less oil in the till than they thought. You did see a spike initially, which is what you see that spike. Where did we get up to? 57.76. And um, it was a quick retracement, though, man. You're down 275 from that from that high of yesterday. Yeah. And look at look at the move. I mean, we went over this, right? So you're sitting at here. Let's just can we go uh, IGPO? Because I mean, the move up and down over the last three days is staggering, man. Uh, we go back to Tuesday. We come back. We're sitting at under 53. We trade to almost 58. So we're in a 52 handle. To what do we get to? So close, 57.76, remarkable. Yeah. And then just like that, we shave almost three dollars off the price as well. We want to talk about some defined risk. Get it in those uh, oil contracts, man. So, so picture something, folks. This is what's pretty cool. One point. So, for four thousand dollars, you can get a contract, right? That may four, have to be updated. Go ahead. No. Yeah. As, in, no, as you're explaining, go ahead. Because what happens here is that that was just a four thousand seven hundred dollar move. It was 4.7. Right? Yeah, we went, right. yeah, we went from 52 and change up right. to 57, 76. Because right. so every, every dollar, every point, folks, is a thousand dollars. Yeah, every dollar they, in the price accrued yeah. is a thousand dollars, right? And um, and then just we get a couple more days of that. They will change just, that. We were just at 57, 76 less than 24 hours ago because right. the numbers came out at 11. We traded higher after 11 a.m. yesterday. You probably hit 57.76 at about noon, let's call it yesterday. And by 10 a.m., you're down $2,700 and you only have 4,000 up. So that means, you know, you only have a buck 25 left before your entire 100% of your investment oh, yeah. is gone. Right. Right. No doubt. Let's go take a look at the XLE. So the XLE has been weak, you know, nothing heavy today, down 19 cents. The, when you look at the XLE, any, any sector that you're looking at, folks, since the S&Ps, the Dow, the NASDAQ, they all got over their range. You know, you should, you should be looking at, like, okay, you get a stronger or weaker sector, okay? And you can yes. see this is a weak sector. It couldn't get over its range of 59.94. I believe the XLF is going to be the same setup. Because those were the two weakest indices. No, XLF got over it. Yeah. XLF, uh, I'd say 2731. So know. the range of reference is basically like the entirety of August. Yeah. For all those, you know, we yeah. traded down hard right into August, and then we had the oscillation in there in the indices, and yeah, we're back above those levels. Some of the higher volume equities. Oh, Beyond Meat. Let's go to Beyond Meat. Well, I, I, B Y N D. B Y N D. One more. I had, One more year. I had brought this up yesterday. It, it, B Y N D. Now this doesn't. This story is not relating to what the story was yesterday, but I bet people read this story and said, man, Beyond Meat is, uh, it's down eight bucks right now. Yeah. And what the story was, folks, is that Kroger, uh, which is the largest grocery store in the United States. I thought I saw it. I didn't. Is, um, they're going to have their own brand, right? They're going to, and they're doing business with Beyond Meat right now, but they're going to have their own brand. And they're going into, and they're going into deli meats and everything. Yeah, and, and not that, like, you should expect it, but there you go. Uh, well, that's Seeking Alpha. Here we go. Wall Street Journal. They're going to Bloomberg, maybe. The, 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 the Seeking Alpha one's a good one. It has, it has a lot in it. Okay. I, I, I think that's the one I Sometimes actually, it just oh, takes. No, yeah, okay, that's what I thought yeah. was going to happen. <laughs> okay. Um, you should be expecting this, okay? That's a, and it's great to see it, but this is the whole, perfect. So this yeah. is the whole point, as in competition's coming. Like I say, we shop at Publix, okay? They right. have Greenwise brand, which is more like organic chicken. I love it, but it's their brand. Right. Every big supermarket has their own brand of everything. If you don't think they're going to be coming down the line right. with plant-based, let alone Tyson 
Okay, they don't even have it out. So, totally. So they're all coming down the line, for sure. And so this is ahead. a big one. I mean, look at this. See, it's, they're not only going to roll out plant-based burgers, grinds, and other products. They're getting into deli meats. What else is in there? Yeah. Uh, so they, you know, Cincinnati-based, one of the biggest retailers to introduce a store-branded line of meatless products, part of its effort to reinvigorate sales as it faces tough competition from online service, discount grocers. Kroger, so Kroger, which sells Beyond Meats, meat replacements, patties, and sausages, will put its own plant-based deli slices, sausages, and other products at the 1,800 of its 2,800 stores this fall. And I imagine that if this works out, they'll be at all 2,800 yeah, in no time. That's quite a test, 1,800. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so Kroger's patties are pea-based, designed to resemble beef. Um, Big number, man. You know. Yeah. And that's you know that's why some of that valuation of Beyond Meat, man, because oh. Tyson's gonna have the same thing. Totally. Meanwhile, Tyson's got you know a multi-billion-dollar supply chain already in place. Right. So tell me why Beyond Meat's that special. Exactly. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's up 62, NASDAQ is up 3, S&Ps are up 10.5, and, and at the break, I had to go over, folks, we had to go over to Lululemon to see what these uh, $68 tank tops uh, cost. So here, check this out. We got, we got, we're going to give them a free, yeah. we'll call it an ad, but man, oh man, I'm not going to be buying it. I mean, they, 
They look like regular tank tops from all they, I can they tell. They do. Man, except they got a $68 price tag on them. And, so. and watch this. What we did is that uh, Tommy turned yeah. around and brought Nike up because it's they're 50% more than Nike. And Nike's expensive. It's it, to, to be, it's, it's, it's more, more money, almost, almost, almost 75% when you go from 40 to 68, right? I mean, it's staggering. You know, here's a Nike, and Nike, premium brand, expensive. Right. Just staggering, right. man. Right. Um, <laughs> and then you go over, for instance, you know, I say, okay, what are, because women's such a huge portion oh, yeah. of theirs, right? I it mean, started off with women. Leggings, exactly. especially. 118, 128, 120 to $130. And on the men's side, you pull up joggers, which are basically leggings, same deal, 118, 128. So you're paying almost $120 for pants. And that was for men's, that was tank tops. Let's see what they're pushing for t shirts. 78. 78 bucks for a t shirt. 80 bucks. You want you want a collar on there? Add $10. $88. <laughs> Pretty remarkable, man. But they just keep. That's they interesting. Just keep I, didn't, I didn't know that they actually sell the, uh, you know, the, the regular like, collars. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Right. I guess right. I didn't either. I just right. I know we're clear. Right. We are finding out more. Pretty wild. Man. Oh man, that's quite a price tag. I mean, that's that's really. You, know, yeah, you can I, see why they're bringing dolls to the bottom line. I guess. I, I mean, I guess I, I, you know, at some point, isn't there some elasticity in terms of the price means something to people and they stop buying because. Yeah, if you can sell hundred dollar shirts, you can add to the bottom line if people buy it. But I haven't bought a hundred dollar shirt in a while, man. Let alone a t shirt. Right. A right. collared shirt. Right. Man, oh man. Yeah. Some of the higher volume equities out here today. You get advanced micro down sixty uh, cents. Um, uh, DocuSign. We'll see what's going on there. DocuSign's yeah. up uh, eight ninety five. Uh, Twenty percent. Big number, man. Yes. Uh, so they must have come out with numbers here. You got. Um, Roco up a far forty cents. Facebook's getting slammed. That's down four thirty one. Okay. And I think this has to do with the New York Attorney General. Um, states crosses. Yep. Right? So I'm so. launching investigation. Yep. New York Attorney General. I'm launching investigations at Facebook to determine whether their actions endanger consumer data, reduced the quality of consumers' choices, and increased the price of advertising. Well, I better uh, send that New York AG an email and says, "Yep, yep, yep." They. they yeah. <laughs> There's no doubt about that, man. Yeah. Uh, you know. And it's straight out that they didn't follow the law. I mean, they already had a right. consent decree that they weren't going to do this kind of stuff. They knew about the stuff. The internal emails are coming out. Um, it's a straight conscious decision to, to basically break the law. So I hope they do because. Yeah. No, there's no doubt. No. Yeah. The way they violated that trust. I mean, we all know that we give our data over to companies when they charge nothing. I mean, that's the deal you're making. So be aware, right? You're using a product, you're using a service. And it's a shame because you see all these social media shares where people say like, oh, this company doesn't have a right to use my data. No, that's, you know, you're, you're, you're off in candy land. Folks, they, they, never you know? read, they never read the terms. They hit the terms. Not even right? the terms. It's, it's like, wait, you don't get to tell the company that I'm going to be on Facebook and then I get to tell you what you do with my posts or something. It's, it's right. this alternative universe that they're living in. Um, of course they own what you post. You're posting it on their site. They're a company. That's how things work. But that doesn't mean they can't lie to you and break their own terms and break right. consent degrees. That's right. where it really gets pretty, pretty over the top. So uh, DocuSign, they were looking for a 221 million. They came in with 252. It's a big number, man. I'd say 15 beat, 15 yeah. percent beat yeah. on revenue, man. That's nice. Yeah. They got an extra 30 million dollars in revenue, and they were only supposed to have 220. That's a. And where do they go from? Uh, did that hit their profits at all? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, break let me just have it must. Do it get, I'll get a different one. Let's see. That's interesting. So this is a adjusted Ooh. misses it. Okay, so adjusted. Earnings per share, one cent versus three. So whatever yeah. that is, and it know. was it was that's year on year. The estimate was even higher. They were looking for four. Yeah, um, which is remarkable though, because like you're saying, that's the second quarter. Um, let's see. So adjusted earnings per share, but they actually had second quarter loss per share of thirty nine cents. But regardless, maybe that revenue number, and as it is. Revenue is usually the only thing that matters because you keep growing your revenue. Yeah. You can always get your expenses in line. And year over year, it's up 47%. That's a big number, right? It's a huge number. <laughs> yeah. It's a huge number. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And this has been a highly volatile stock. You know, if, if you look at this... Um, boy, oh boy. Yeah, you'll see. Let me just... I'll just bring this back a year. Yeah, well, you know, you're, you're up at... What's that? Fifty-nine bucks. So it's close to the highs again. Yeah. Then you get all the way down to forty-three. I guess that's not that bad. Can you go back even further? I mean, yeah. the highs of the last year we have there. I wonder where they. 
Yeah, so that's as far back as they go. So that's three years. Oh, man, I can maybe. I think that might be that they only went public back then. Because go ahead. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. all. So, and they yeah. went public. So let's see. They went public at, oh, let's see, April. Yeah, so they went public yes. at 29. Look at this. This is a cool one, folks, to, to yeah. look at, too. And this is, you know, depending on how long you've been in the markets, you, you really want to pay attention to this because they these companies love doing this. And, I, and listen, if we own the company, we'd do it, too. You, I, it right. got, you know, there's no doubt. They raise all this money at 29 at high, bucks. The, you want to raise as much money you can you know, at the highs. And they almost, let's just call it like May 1st, to make it simple, yeah. you know, April 26th. Right. They raise it almost in May 1st. They come out $29. Well, geez, by September 1st, the stock's at 55 so it would be fools not to raise some money again, right? If you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna sell off equity in the company at almost the start of May at 29 bucks a share, right? Then you're probably confident enough to say if you can use that equity too, you yes. know, if you can use the capital, right? Um, which I guess they believe they can't. Same beyond what did beyond did the same thing, right? Yes, Didn't they? they? Did. I mean, the, and that one even let's take a look even much more. Yeah, and I don't know is. if they're gonna have it only because maybe they haven't come out with it yet. Well, no, they, well, there it is. <laughs> look at that. That is intense. That sure is, man. So if you liked it at 25, you're going to love it at 160. So Wait, check this no, out, folks. They sold, it went public yes. at $25. Yes. And it never traded at 25, yeah. by the way. We'll it traded at 45. Okay. That was how it opened and never, you know, yeah. never looked back. Is that, yeah, that is actually. That is. Three months. Within three th months. Three months later. Yep. They sold 3.7 million shares at $160. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man, that is so cool. That yeah. is sick. Yeah. That is, and I mean, you just have to do it. So, you know, at 25 bucks, uh, they're raising about 275 million, right here. Yep. <laughs> and at 160 bucks for every million shares. So I just said that's that's 275 they raised on the full, because they push the out IPO. 11. Yep. Yeah. And then I got to do the quick math, but for every million shares they push out at 160, it's 160 million. So you got 320, you got 480. Man, you're, yeah, exactly. They raised a lot more money, almost three times as much capital, by pushing out like a third of the shares. Yeah. That is pretty amazing. Yeah. That, that really is, wow. Yes. That is, a, now, hey. And not we, often do you get to. We, we were talking about SoftBank yesterday. Look at yeah, this. Is this it, is going to be No heavy. more IPO? No. The they I, might not. That was, that's what I hear coming. Oh, really? Yeah. The, so what's happening. We're talking about WeWork, right? Yeah. Is that the, uh, I guess if I pull up SoftBank, it'll probably just, be underneath maybe it. Maybe just go here. There we go. Right here? Right? Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. what we want to look at. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stock Stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN.
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So, we work in SoftBank. They get Man. quite a deal going here. And I said, we'll go a little slowly through here because there's so many moving parts in this thing, man. And it, and it demonstrates there's a lot going on right now. I mean, one of the biggest venture capitals out there, right, SoftBank, they're coming in and trying to raise a second fund right now. So, we've been talking about it. You have WeWork contemplating their IPO. And its biggest backer, Japan SoftBank, is bracing for a potentially staggering loss, a stark reminder of the risks of investing strategy. So SoftBank has 29% stake in WeWork. Um, the company has plowed $10.65 billion into the startup, and WeWork lost $1.6 billion last year. So perhaps more than any other startup. They're just saying this embodies kind of what SoftBank is doing, just making huge bets in companies yeah. that aren't even close to profitable yet. And they have their vision fund, but at the same time, they're starting their second vision fund. Now, the last round of funding, this is where it starts to get really interesting. SoftBank's big bet may already be turning sour as WeWork mulls an IPO that would peg it worth, that would peg its worth at less than half its $47 billion valuation when SoftBank invested just earlier this year. Talk about missing the mark, man. Right. How, do, how does a company, just to pause for a second, like SoftBank, that has their tentacles and everything, right. not realize they can't go out to these potential institutional investors and say, listen, we're investing here. If we come to you guys in September, where are you going to peg us, right? Yes. Talk about missing the mark. So the New York company is now said to be considering a market debut of just 20 to 30, and I think it's going to be more towards this 20 uh, number, it, the it, more we keep yes, hearing about exactly. it. exactly. Um, and they say, you know, it's a tough time because SoftBank, they're just trying to start this second $108 billion vision fund, and they, they have Uber in there, which is taking a hit, right, yep. in terms of, and so this is where you were talking about, you'd read this earlier, this is where it gets interesting, though, because everybody in the whole SoftBank operation is tied to how these companies do, and yes. it's not on a deal-to-deal -deal basis. Right. So SoftBank staffers at the Vision, some staffers at the Vision Fund are now concerned that the WeWork's valuation could fall further, even to below $20 billion. Um, that's the that's that's the original investment made okay. by the Vision Fund. Pretty amazing, man. Yeah. The valuation of their visual, original investment. According to people familiar with the company who asked not to be identified, yeah, I wouldn't want to be identified either if I work for that company and I was talking about that. So because the Vision Fund is so exposed to WeWork, it will pay a substantial play a substantial role in compensation for employees of the fund. People at the Vision Fund are not paid on a deal-by-deal -deal basis, as with some other venture firms. Vision Fund employees, including high-profile bankers and investors, receive base salaries and bonuses, but only get payouts when profits are booked. They are also on the hook, and this is the key, yeah. for potential losses facing clawbacks of 20% and above for some senior staff and 7% for more, I mean, that's going to be a mammoth loss that they have oh, to yeah. make up 
before they ever get a bonus of any type of you know decree at all and they get the claw back yes right you know and there's also a possibility that we work could delay the ipo and this is where i write so yeah. you have um the ceo um pledged to softbank ceo that they'll have a valuation of no lower, lower than 47 billion when it goes public. Now, I kind of said sarcastically, doesn't every CEO that goes to a venture capitalist say, whatever valuation you give us, we're, we're not gonna go public right. at right. below that level? Right. I mean, that's, if it's not, I don't, I mean, it's well, not like what, a legal document he's saying, right? No, he's not right. guaranteeing and, and it with his equity. Of course you're saying that, they wouldn't IPOs, invest in you. They wouldn't invest you if you're, you said, there's a chance we might go public at, at less of a valuation. And than if you're, you're going to go public, you better make sure that you're growing exponentially, folks. Okay? Yeah. That's and the bottom line. And it's an easier sell to the public, usually, than it is to venture capitalists. So yeah. if you can sell it to a venture capitalist, which, like I said, their tentacles right. and everything, right. then you should probably, as we've seen, be able to sell it to the public like they did with Uber, like they've done yes. with Lyft, right? Um, so The thing that's interesting, too, Tom, uh, is that... What you had, folks, you know, I haven't, I don't know whether they've been in the documents the last three or four years, but what you'd normally had after the crash of 2000, right, is that if, if, if you were the investor. From SoftBank. Yeah, you're SoftBank. You're okay, coming to me for an evaluation. What you would be saying to me is that, okay, listen, I'll give you that valuation. I'll peg you at $47 billion. That's right. But. If that IPO comes out less than that, you're going to have to come up with more stock yeah. to make me whole. You're going to have to do something. Yeah, right. It, I bet it, it can be a lot of things, it, it, right? It's more, more stock. The, no, it's specifically more straight stock. Straight more stock that, to that, make me better. Straight yeah. out, that yeah. you get, you get to basically yeah. what you're going to do is that you're going to dilute yourself. Sure. Okay, and you're going to make me whole sure. for that. And there's nothing in this article yeah. that says that, which is. Uh, bottom line is that you, well things have loosened up. That's, I mean, that's WeWork's been a darling of like the oh, yeah. you know unicorn private company. I, you know what I think? For a I while, think, I think so. one of their biggest problems was that the bad publicity, you know, with the aspect of uh, the CEOs and the executive staff buying the buildings yes. and leasing them. That, that bad press. And I listen, yeah. we want to thank all the tigers and tigresses. We get we some, got good some good feedback. feedback. We totally, get some great because we and it's so and what the feedback was, and it's, it's real folks. The feedback would be that if you're if you're leasing the property versus buying it, because you know you can make more in your balance sheet because there's no depreciation that has to go on your balance sheet. The problem with owning the real estate is that the depreciation has to go on the balance sheet so you can be in losses on a continual basis even though you're not in a loss. Sure. That's and where cash flow versus exactly losses, versus so forth. you know because it, it's not a, it's not a cash loss. It's yeah. a, you know. And one of the other you know just feedbacks we got, which is we were kind of talking about it yesterday, is you know so you have the CEO buying buildings. Right. He's leasing it to WeWork. Right. He has a guaranteed leaser in there. Right. And he's paying that off as it's coming down the line. Yes. So he's going to own the building almost outright. Right. No matter what happens with WeWork. Now in a private company, not really a big deal. But when you're taking investor money, yeah, and then, you know, talk about a conflict of interest. Talk about you know, bad things can happen in that scenario. As in, oh. are you really? Do you really have the investor's best interest in mind that you're taking their money as you're saying this? Well, guess what? That kind of stuff can happen. Um, and then the last part of the article that we saw in there is that they might pause the IPO. Right? Yes. They might go back to SoftBank for more money right. uh, as a way to not have to go to the IPO because they're going to need money, though. That, that was part yes. of the reason to go to the IPO. Right. So if they don't IPO, they're going to have to raise money. And, and who and better to go back to than the people that just pegged you at $47 billion, they, I guess, and give that, them, they're going to get a different valuation, yeah, though, for like sure. 16. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, that, and I suspect the way this is going, I, I suspect that's kind of the way it's probably going to shake out, you know, because there's, I agree. there's, there's got to be, you know, that's, yeah. that can make SoftBank in a much better position than you, oh. go, than you go public two years from now or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, I agree. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, let's go take a look at the uh, E-mini. Yeah, excuse me, folks. The, so, you got a little bounce going on here. You got, whoops. Yeah, so we, we get down to a 2970. You're up 14 points from that. There's no, there's no, we get nice volatility in this market, man. Yeah. Let's, let's, so the, the, the VIX right now, that's laying out of 1552. Not bad. That's quite a move, huh? Oh, no, man. 
this week we went from 2115 to 1552. Now it's interesting here, it's just like 1551 is the last low, right? I mean, it matches up, right? This this chart's almost an inverse of the indices, right? We had all this volatility, you have the I indices know. back above that level, you get the VIX below. I mean, that's, you can see the line and it's basically yeah. August, which was quite a month. Totally. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 79. Nasdaq's up 16. S&Ps are up 11. We got a uh, market that, uh, bottom line, you know, going sideways, you're, you're higher. You know, the high of yesterday, so the high of yesterday, folks, and we were almost close to the highs. Yeah. And the SPY's 280, 298.83. Uh, All right. Know, 33. Right, right next to it. Yeah, 33 yeah. pennies in the SPY. Yeah. Right so go take a look at the, uh, well, actually, let's go look at the, what's the strength versus the weakness. The chips yesterday took the NDX high big time. Lululemon. Look at that. Athleisure. Yeah. Up 7.8%. You got uh, Alexian Pharmaceutical up 3.3. Uh, Costco's up 2. Okay. Autodesk is uh, up 2. Taken away from it, AMD down 2. Netflix off 1.6. That's a big number for Netflix. Yeah. Let me just... See what's going on there, right? Maybe everybody... Uh, it's close to those lows again. Heard yeah. me yesterday talking about that they're going to start releasing shows one week at a time. We don't like that. Yeah. Tell them none of that. 
Because even our man Dave White was in there asking a great question, right? Well, you know, why can't you wait, right? You wait for them all to get released, and then you watch it. Right. But you always want to be on the top of what everyone's talking about in culture, right? So that's why when they release a show, everyone's talking about it, right? When Game of Thrones is rocking and rolling, right. everyone's talking about it. And you that's, how more, to, that's how more people listen to it, too. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's people yeah. talking about it at work, right? They're talking about everything. You don't want to be the person that says, ah, I'm not watching it for two years because I'm waiting every episode to come out and then I'm going to binge watch it. Yeah. So you're going to see. It'll be interesting to see where it goes, man. Competition, yeah. though, that's the bottom line. They're facing competition when they start thinking about changing their entire business model. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's look at the transports. They haven't looked at the transports for us. So transports, uh, they broke out, too. They not broke out, but they got over their range. So yep. transports, yes, they got yep. over the uh, 10,003 debt, 39. That could look like an SBY chart right yeah. there as you pull it up, it right? Definitely it could. Yeah. Pretty wild. Yeah. Listen, folks, stay right there. we got TD Ameritrade coming up next. Then we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Oh, Go get him, folks.